Hey Kevin here with another Flip and Dork Flips and Finds video where I show you different items to pick up really cheap, thrifting, garage selling. I buy them real cheap, okay? But then I also try to buy them where they have good value so I can resell them online, either on eBay, which you can look up sold prices and see if it's worth buying. I try to do like an average of a $30 profit or higher for the most part, or I sell locally and uh, I do that like on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace has really taken over Craigslist, at least around here where I'm living. So most of the local items end up going on there. And uh, kind of the same thing. Sometimes I sell items that only make me 10, 15 bucks, but for the most part, I try to get locally like at least $25 profit or higher. And for the bigger items, I'm trying to get closer to like 50. So like a dresser or a table set, whatever. I'm trying to make, you know, $45, $50 profit on top of what I paid for it or higher. So anyway, this week starts off a little bit slow, but it was a good flip. It's this right here. You can tell I already have it packed up, so I'll have to show a picture. But this is a Cutco knife. I got it at a garage sale along with two others. They were only a dollar each. I remember uh, hearing that Cutco was a good brand to resell. When I looked up this particular model, it was worth really good money, okay? So uh, I assumed just off of the quick search I did, off of the sold comps on eBay, that it would probably go somewhere between 50 or $60. So that's a great flip for only one dollar. So I bought all three of those knives, I brought them home, I looked into them further, I realized the ones I bought were slightly older versions of the model I saw, and uh, I mean they're all different models, but they're like a little bit older ones, probably from the 90s, so not, you know, close to 20 years old or whatever. And uh, anyway, I decided to, you know, list them a little bit lower than what I kind of thought they might go for. So this particular knife, I thought, was going to go for 50 to 60. I realized it was more like a 40 to 50. I wanted to get on the higher end, so I put it at 49.95 plus shipping. So it was up for a while. Several people were checking it out, but I never got anyone interested enough to buy it. So a few days ago, I decided to go ahead and put a best offer on there. I don't remember if I put my bottom end on the best offer at 40 or 42 dollars. But once I did that, I started getting some offers. So there's, you know, $20 off or $25. I think there was one for like $35. Then someone serious gave me an offer for $42. All right. When I saw that, I thought, you know what? They're also going to pay shipping. They're going to pay about top end of what this thing is worth. I should go ahead and take it. So I decided to accept their offer. So it sold for $42 plus shipping. So in total, they paid an additional $6.70 for shipping. So in total, it sold for $48.70. So that's not too bad. I think it's going all the way to California. It's just a big, long uh, chef's knife. I took the blade, I sandwiched it between two pieces of cardboard bigger than the blade, taped it up so that it couldn't like, poke or cut anything. Then I took the entire knife, including the cardboard around the blade, and I cut even bigger cardboard, these two pieces here, sandwiched it, and then taped it up really well, sealed all the edges, wrapped it a couple times in a few spots, and it's good to go. I've sold several knives like that, pretty easy pretty thin and it's light so it's not going to be that expensive it's only 14 ounces so it goes first class so it's not too bad so anyway i need to go ahead put a label on that ship it out and then we'll see what else sells this week all right so i had a couple of ebay sales overnight so not too bad pretty decent first one here is nintendo wii mario kart this one's complete it's the case the game disc and the manual it's not in the best condition though the case has a little staining the disc has some scratches and I guess the manual's okay, maybe a couple of creases or whatever. So, I mean, it's not like perfect conditions, definitely not new. Um, because the, the game disc, it was a little bit more scratched up than a lot of disc games I get. So I decided to price it a little bit cheaper. Um, I got this at a garage sale for 50 cents a long time ago. I put it away in a bag and I totally forgot I had it until a couple of days ago when I was looking around at all the stuff I had left over. I still need to list. And I was like, oh, I totally forgot about that. That's a good game. It's probably like 20 bucks. I should list it. So yesterday I put the listing up, within probably four hours it sold, so it went quick. All right, so I only paid 50 cents for it, and because it scratched up, I went a little bit cheaper. It probably could have sold for about 20, 21, 22 dollars, somewhere around there. I put it at 17.95 free shipping, and it sold. So, uh, you know, only got 50 cents in it, that's not bad. It'll probably be 2.66 to ship out. I'll pay some fees, so that's not a bad flip for a video game. It's pretty decent. Okay, next thing it sold is this right here. This is a box full of vintage, like 1987, 1988, um, My Little Ponies, all right? The original ones, the generate, uh, first generation ones. I uh, got these at a garage sale a while back. This lady has a bunch of cool vintage toys from the 80s and 90s. Um, 
she had a sign hanging that said all toys 10 cents so I went through I picked out all the best stuff I could find I think I bought 28 items total so two dollars and eighty cents I just gave her three dollars and said you know that's fine whatever it's just 20 cents just keep it you know so I got everything for three bucks I had two boppets I had a talking nano puppy keychain digital pet thing and then a whole bunch of these so to make the math easier I called each bop at 50 cents. They both have already sold for $25 each. That little tiny talking nano puppy keychain thing, I considered it 50 cents. It sold for $64.95, crazy. And then these, I figured I could probably get about $100, but I needed to clean them up. They were pretty dirty, their hair was a mess. So we brought them home, we cleaned them with rubbing alcohol, and then you can straighten their hair with fabric softener and a brush so you like soak them. Uh, soak their hair in fabric softener and then you comb it out uh, straight and then you twirl it around their leg and you let it dry. It's a little trick we saw on um, wine somewhere. And uh, anyway, my wife did that. So they smell a lot better. They're in better condition, but they're not perfect at all. Three or four of them have uh, their hair was cut. There's three or four that were supposed to have wings they're missing. So they are definitely not in the best condition ever. I put them at $100. I figured it, they were probably worth that. I didn't know if they'd really sell for there or not, and they didn't. So I had global shipping uh, program selected, and eventually I was like, these things need to move. I dropped the price. I don't remember how much, maybe to $90, and I put a best offer down to 75 bucks. And then I started getting offers. Of course, people don't know how much your low end is on the offer, so I was getting like $20 offers, $35. And then someone in Germany really, really wanted it, and they gave me an offer of 75 bucks. Now, I tried to counter at 80, because I think, yeah, I think I hit, went from 100 to 90, the best offer of 75. So I was trying to get a little more, and they were like, hey, the shipping and all that's going to cost a whole lot. Could you really, you know, I'd really love to have them. Could you do 75? So I decided to go ahead and do that. I took the 75 bucks. That's also a free shipping. It's not a real big box, but I only have to pay for it to go to Kentucky to the warehouse and then from there they get shipped off to Germany and the person will pay that shipping. So that's not a big deal. So it probably won't cost that much at all actually, probably seven, eight bucks, something like that to ship it over there. So not too bad at all. So it ended up being a pretty decent flip. I have a dollar fifty in them and sold for seventy five bucks and I'll pay some shipping. So they're definitely gonna be way over fifty dollar profit, probably over sixty dollar profit. So that's not too bad at all. So anyway, I need to go ahead get these ready to ship off. And then also a little bit later I should have a uh, local sale happening. Um, I think I'll be selling that coffee table I bought this past weekend, so we'll see. But anyway, let me get these shipped off and we'll see what happens. All right, so here is that local item that's going to sell. It's this coffee table I picked up over the weekend for 10 bucks. Kind of interesting. It's really big. It's, I think, 38 inches square, the glass top, and it has several drawers that slide out that are lined. I got it for 10 bucks, which I thought was a great deal. And uh, anyway, I should be selling it here in just a few minutes for $40, so it'd be a $30 profit, which is not too bad for something like this. So anyway, hopefully they show up in a couple minutes. All right, so it's Friday. I did some garage selling today. I did not have any eBay sales last night or today. It's been kind of slow this week. And uh, I did have a couple of local sales yesterday, though. I just showed you the coffee table. I paid $10 at a garage sale last, I think, Saturday, and then it sold yesterday, Thursday for 40 bucks, that's not too bad, $30 on that. It was kind of rough, so it's actually pretty good. I figured it, it would make about $25, $30 profit. Also, I sold the cedar chest. I didn't have time to shoot video. They showed up before, uh, like 20 minutes before we had uh, scheduled, so I didn't get the camera out, and they just kind of showed up. So I'll show you a picture, but it's that cedar chest I bought mm, a month ago, maybe longer. It's taken a while to sell. I got it for five bucks. They were asking $10 at a garage sale, but really rough and scratched up. Um, but it was solid cedar inside. Outside it had some veneer, and there's like chunks missing, so it was going to need work and probably painted on the outside. But then the interior is really nice cedar. I was asking $45, and some guy, I think on Facebook, was interested to use it as a coffee table. He showed up. It was even bigger than he expected, which he was really happy about, so he paid me the full $45. So I made a $40 profit on that, so that's not too bad at all. Okay, so now fast forward today. I did some garage selling. Before I show you the items I found, I want to show you this. I'm considering this free money. So a couple weeks ago, I went to Kansas City, and I bought some pretty cool stuff. One of the items was that really big remote control truck I showed you. It was a New Bright, which is kind of like a cheapo Walmart brand. Um, no one really cares about 
the remote control part, they just like the bodies on them. They're built pretty nice, they have good detail, and they take those bodies and they put them on really high-end RC trucks, like for crawling up rocks and things like that. So they put like hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars into these trucks, and then they buy these like heavier duty, you know, cheapo Walmart bodies to put on top. They look kind of realistic. So anyway, that truck, they, the guy was asking 10, but he didn't have the remote. He had the battery and the charger for it. Uh, I was able to get it for five bucks because one of the wheels was messed up and he didn't have a remote. I bring it home. The body itself, I'm asking a hundred dollars. It will probably sell a little less than that because there's someone right now that has another one currently listed, I think for $70 free shipping. So hopefully mine will go somewhere between 70 and 100 free shipping. So mm, probably 70, 80, 75, somewhere around there. It's probably what it's really worth, but we'll see. So I had the battery and the charger. I almost got rid of them last night. I was like, you know, it's just some cheap old Walmart thing. I mean, no one really cares about it, but maybe I should look it up before I throw it away. So this is a new bright remote or RC 9.6 volt lithium ion charger. Just the charger here goes for about 12 to 13.95 on eBay, free shipping. All right, now I also had the battery in the chassis. I actually threw the chassis away. I kept the body, I kept this thing. I pulled this out. I uh, double checked the charge on a uh, voltmeter. It still holds the charge. I plugged it in, put it into the wall. It charges up, so it still works. The combo of the battery and the charger is about 25 to 26.95 on eBay, free shipping. So I will definitely sell this. So if the truck body ends up going for like 70, 75, and I end up getting about 25 out of this, I will still get about a $100 sale out of that $5 item I picked up. So that's not too bad. Okay, so now I'll show you the items I picked up today. The first one is this jacket. It's a vintage Reebok windbreaker pullover, half zip type jacket. It's got the Reebok spell out on the front over a flap where there's a zipper. The back is blank. So it's not like over the top. Sometimes they have a really big logo in the back or they'll have you know, a huge Reebok spell out down the sleeves. Those are worth more money. This one's kind of mid-range. Has a hood that folds up into the collar up top. Really clean condition. I got this at a garage sale. I've actually been to this house before because I've sold them furniture off of Facebook. So uh, I, don't I don't think it was last year. I think it was earlier this year I went to a garage sale and uh, picked up two dressers, a DVD VCR combo, and a Levi's denim jacket. I think I paid $60, $65 total for all of it. And uh, the two dressers I brought home, I wiped them down, took pictures, put them up on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace uh, for $140. These people really liked it, but they wanted me to deliver because they only had a car, they didn't have any way to get it. I thought, you know, no problem, it's just right across town. Took it over there, they liked them, they paid me $140, you know, we're good, whatever. So today I'm driving around, I see this really big sale, and I pull up and I'm like, wait a minute, this is that house I've sold furniture to before. I wonder if they have it for sale. So I walk around, they don't, it's mostly baby stuff, but the one thing they had was this nylon jacket. So pretty cool, like I explained, I mean it has a pretty good sized Reebok on the front, it's not just a little tiny thing on the chest, but like I said, no logo, nothing like over the top. You know, the, the more wild, the more logoed out it is, the more money. But these uh, nylon jackets, for the most part, they'll go like $30 to $40. That's a, I expect this one, probably like $35, $40. But uh, one cool detail is the white section here. And part of it, if the two pieces of material touch, the logo appears, all right? And then when they separate, it you know, kind of disappears. So I've actually sold one. I believe it was identical to this, just a different size, because I remember... This thing down here, the color combo, and I remember the white was really yellowed on the last one. It's still sold. So this one's in nicer condition, so I think it will do really well. Okay, another garage sale. It was this uh, part of town I've been to before. I've bought really nice electronics there. Uh, maybe not nice, but just like good stuff that has sold well. A um, couple of Nintendo Game Boy Advances with a whole bunch of games. I think I paid 15 total, and it sold for $85 or something like that. And... Uh, I don't remember. I've, I've bought, oh, I bought high-end sunglasses. I bought a PSP at another sale. Uh, some other stuff like that. So pretty, pretty decent stuff. Well, today I found two things there. Um, first one here is a Panasonic. I thought it was like a Walkman cassette player, but this is actually a voice recorder. So it's a Panasonic RQ-L335. It's only 25 cents. So I gave it a shot. I looked it up on eBay comps. Solds were going for about 25 bucks. I thought that's not too bad. 
I bring it home, put batteries in it, test it, it doesn't work. So it's only a 25 cent loss. I might go ahead and try to sell it as parts repair only. Maybe I'll get $10 out of it. Probably not. I don't know if it'd be worth it if it's really only like five bucks. I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I might do it or just get rid of it. I'm not sure. Okay, the other item I bought was a VCR slash DVD combo. Kind of weird. You know, I buy this from people that was kind of related to one of these. And then today I find one at a different sale. They're only asking $10. It's a Magnavox MWD2205. It has the remote. It has the uh, RCA cables that just fell on the ground a while ago. But uh, anyway, 10 bucks. It should be a decent flip. It's not worth crazy money. It's like $50 plus shipping. Some people are getting about 80 with free shipping. So, um, you know, pay 10. Let's say it goes for 50. That brings me down to 40. Then after fees and all that, eh, I'll make between like 30, 35 dollars profit, something like that. So not an amazing flip, but not too bad. I'll just have to test it and make sure it works. Okay. The best item of today, though, is this set of books. So I got these at a, a pretty good sale. So it's uh, kind of a <coughs> one of those sales where you wouldn't expect them to have like really nice stuff, but you expect them to have like some kind of cool vintage stuff, and they did. All right, so they were probably in their upper 50s. They probably had kids about my age, maybe a little bit younger, that were no longer living with them, but they still had their stuff and they're selling it off. It's the kind of sale I like to find cool like 80s, 90s collectibles and toys and things like that. So this is a huge lot of R.L. Stein Goosebumps books, number one through 61, although there's only 52 books total, so it's missing about nine of them. I was looking through here. It has number one all the way through number 39, except it's missing number seven, and then it's missing number 40. So between one and 40, it's missing two, and then between 40 and 61, it's missing a bunch. Okay, so not too bad. I looked them up. Oh, by the way, as you can see, they were 10 cents each or $5 for the set. I wish I would have got there earlier because apparently it was a totally complete set, 1 through 61. But the lady said a few people bought some books out of it earlier today. So that's kind of a bummer. I think it would have been worth a lot more money, totally complete. It should still go for good money now, though. So I have 52 of them. And to kind of compare, I did see a lot of 80 that went for like 90-something plus shipping, so a little over $100. There was a lot of 90 that went for 120, I think, plus shipping. So I think with mine being 52 of them, I might be able to get 65 to $75. I think I'll shoot for about 75 plus shipping, and uh, we'll see where they go. So anyway, that's not too bad of a find, especially for only five bucks. That's pretty cool. So anyway, that's what I found today. Hopefully I can sell some more stuff today, and then I head up some sales tomorrow and maybe find some more. So we'll see. I almost completely forgot I did buy one local item. It was the same sale where I got the voice recorder and the VCR DVD combo. And it's this bike. It's a kid's diamond back. It's not in the greatest condition though. It's got some rust back here. The chain's kind of rusty and the front brake needs some adjustment. It needs air in the tires. But it was only 10 bucks. All right, so it's a diamond back. It's got a six speed gear shift. The brakes and all that work it's not in terrible condition so I decided to go ahead and get it because I've done decent with kids bikes I think I could probably sell it for about well depending on the rust I think I might be able to get about 35 out of it so I'd make about a $25 profit maybe hopefully we'll see but that's probably where I'll list it so I almost totally forgot I bought this all right, so speaking of local sales, I had two of them today. They both were bikes. This is the second one. The first one, I was unable to get video. The guy showed up an hour before he was supposed to. I was barely ready for him to come by. And anyway, it was that gray, huffy cruiser bike that was gonna be turned into a moped. I got it for 10 bucks. I thought I was gonna really lose that money. Well, that guy ended up paying 45 bucks for it. And now this one, uh, I got for $25. I was asking 75, and the guy is willing to pay me $100 to go bring it to him. So that's what I'm gonna do next. All right, so let me show you what I picked up Saturday. I know it looks like a wreck, but I bought a bunch of stuff at one garage sale. So Saturday, it was raining pretty heavily, and there was only two Saturday-only sales that I had not checked out on Friday, and uh, there wasn't a lot of sales Friday anyway. So I went and checked them out, and they were rained out and not open. So I decided to check out Facebook Marketplace, see if there's any new uh, ads that had popped up, and there was one. All right, and what was interesting is in the pictures they had some vintage toys. So I thought, man, you know, I've done pretty well with some vintage toys. I should go check that out. 
So I show up to the garage sale. I think they opened at 7.30. I got there just a little bit before 8.30. So I was fairly late and I'm thinking, okay, you know, they probably sold out in some good stuff. I uh, walk up, it's a real nice neighborhood. The main garage, the two car garage is just full of your normal garage sale stuff, but it was like high end. They had really nice stuff. I probably should have looked at it better. They probably had really, really uh, good stuff that could have flipped well but I was really interested in checking out the toys. So I walked into this little room off of the garage. It was real narrow, probably just big enough to like work on a motorcycle in there, like pretty small. You couldn't fit a car or anything. And uh, it was, I guess his hobby shop. He had all these boxes just full of model airplane kits. He had all these vintage small toys, kind of, you know, before Hot Wheels and Matchbox, like little cars like that and some uh, race car stuff and some hot rod models, a few of those, and uh, some signs and some old board games from the 60s and 70s and just really cool stuff like that. So I'm looking at it all and I'm looking at these models and I'm thinking, wow, these things are really old. They got cool graphics and the sign says $3 each unless otherwise marked. Now a few of the bigger ones, like this one, he was wanting $8 for it. This one he's wanting four, but this box is the only one that had models that were not three dollars. So for the most part, I mean, you know, tons and tons of models in these, and they're all three dollars each. So I'm thinking, okay, that's a lot of models, three dollars each. I gotta get a better deal. I wonder if I could get them for like maybe two hundred dollars, two fifty, something like that. So I said, well, would you consider selling all of them? And uh, he's like, well, I'll tell you what, if you count up all the kits, I can do a better deal. And uh, so I count them up. There were, I believe, 172 boxes, plus some kits that did not have boxes. They're just in the bag. They're kind of random and loose. I'll probably just have to end up kind of selling them as a big lot to someone that wants some parts or whatever. And uh, anyway, so I'm like, okay, 172 times, let's say, an average of $3. You know, that's quite a bit of money. And uh, I don't know. I got to get a good deal. So he adds it up. I think it was over $500 or whatever it ended up being. He's like, I'll tell you what, how about $450 for everything? So I'm thinking, ah, oh, okay. I mean, he went a little cheaper, but not much. So you could tell he's wanting good money out of it. So there's no way I'm gonna get him for like $200, 250. So I'm thinking, do I wanna offer three? Is that gonna be too low? It probably will. So man, $400, do I really wanna do that? So I was like, I'll tell you what, I could do $400 on him. I'll buy all of them right now, $400. I thought that would do it. And he's like, nope, 450. I really gotta get 450. It's early, you're the first one here. I know I can sell them. I need to get 450. So, you know, I'm, I'm offering him 400 several more times after that. I was like, I mean, I'll buy them all right now. You don't have to deal with it anymore. $400, we're done, 400 cash. I mean, I, list, I mentioned 400 probably five or six times. I was really, really, you know, dead set on 400 and he would not accept it. Well, as we're working out this deal, there's another lady that walks in and she's checking out all his other toys and she's grabbing them and she's getting all the really good stuff. So I could tell she probably is a reseller, maybe has like an antique booth. And then she starts looking at some of the model kits that are not in the boxes, the ones that are in the little bags, that the little cardboard thing on top that hangs that kind of have a cool display. And she looked at me, she's like, do you care if I grab some of these? Uh, you know, I like to have some of these. And I'm thinking, oh, if she's gonna buy some of them. This is not good. Okay, I gotta, I gotta do, I gotta make this work. So I offered the guys like, I'll do 425. I'll tell you what, I could do 425 on it and uh, I'll take them all right now. He's like, no, nope, I gotta have 450. So then the lady starts grabbing some of the kits. I'm thinking, okay, I gotta make this work. I'm just gonna have to do it. I said, all right, I'll do your 450. So I went and got the money. He helped me load them up and I brought them home. And now I am the owner of $450 worth of vintage model airplane kits. Now there's a couple from the 80s and 90s. Some of them were dated 1970s, but I think most of them might be 1960s and maybe 1970s. So they're pretty old. They don't have barcodes. Most of them are not dated, so they're definitely really old. And uh, when I brought them home, I looked into them. Now, some of them are worth really good money. I pulled those out already. Let me see it here. All right, so like this one right here, Shanghai Dragon, the F-14A with fire engine. This kit right here, I'm trying to remember now if it was $20 plus shipping, $25 plus shipping, $30, something like that. Like it was a really good kit. And I got it for an average of four or uh, two fifty, but then there's tons and tons of kits like this, you know, for two fifty. And I looked them up on eBay, and uh, you know they're probably selling for about maybe ten, twelve dollars free shipping, maybe seven, eight, nine plus shipping. So I could like three to four times my money on them, you know, after fees maybe like two to three times. So I'm thinking, okay, if I could get if I could get really good money, I think I could probably do 
maybe four to six times my money, maybe more. Just kind of depends. They're really nice, probably kind of hard to find. So uh, I don't know, we'll just have to see. I'm trying to decide how I want to actually sell them. If I want to do them individually or lot them up, I think I want to try to start individually and see if that goes. It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be interesting to figure out how to keep a, a record of everything. And man, I'd hate to write down, you know, 180 something model kits, but I might have to. I went ahead and ordered boxes that will fit the uh, majority of them. Some uh, 12 by six by four inch boxes. I went the cheapest deal where it worked out to about 49 cents each. So each kit is now about $3. So I got to get more than that out of them to make money. But I think when it's done, my $450 could turn into maybe around $2,000, 2,500, something like that. So I think it could be a pretty good deal. It's gonna be a lot of work, but winter's coming up. Garage sales are gonna start dying off. And I think that would be something to keep me busy over the winter. And hopefully it turns into a really, really good deal. So now let me show you some of the sales I had over the weekend. All right, so you've seen what I bought Friday and Saturday garage selling. Uh, I mean, I got a lot of stuff, tons and tons of stuff on Saturday off of the one sale, but not a lot of sales. They're definitely dying off, but that might the airplanes might end up being my best find ever. It's just gonna take a while to sell. So speaking of sales, here's what sold over the weekend. So I showed you the um, two bikes, the gray huffy kind of rough moped project. Um, I got it for $10. Thinking, oh yeah, I could sell that for like, you know, 25, 30 bucks when I get home. Didn't even pay attention to it when I bought it. And then when I bring it home, I realized, oh, this is like an old moped project. Okay, it's actually probably worth a little more money than I was thinking. So I listed it for $45 and it sold. So I made $35 off of it. The guy that bought it just wanted it for the back wheel that had the big uh, sprocket on it. And uh, he has two moped projects, two moped bike projects he's working on. And he needed some parts off this one. So it's perfect. All right. So then... I sold the red diamond back. I think I showed that to you. Um, I think I said I got it for $25. I looked at my records. I it was for uh, the guy was asking $25 at the garage sale. I offered him I think $15. He was a little bit insulted, but we come to meet at $20. So I got it for $20. Bucks. I listed it locally for $75. I've had it up for a while. I've had a lot of people offering, you know, way less, $30, $40, stuff like that. I figured, well, eh, you know, maybe it's not going to do so well. Then I got a guy that was interested. If I would deliver it to him 30 miles away, he would pay $100 for it. So $25 for me to bring it to him. So I'm like, you know what? I should do it. That's a good deal. So I could turn $20 into a $100 sale. So I get there, show it to him. He really likes it. He hands me $100. I make $80 off of it. And he tells me, I'm putting a motor on it. So I'm thinking, what in the world? Every single big bike I have sold to a guy around here, they have put a motor on it. There's something going on. It's really strange. Plus, what's really weird is all the others were like cruiser bikes. They were not even good cruisers. They were like cheapo, huffy, and Walmart-type cruiser bikes. And every single one of them, someone said they're putting a the motor on it. This thing is a Diamondback. You know, pretty good brand. It's kind of probably after they somewhat sold out because it was made in China and just, I don't know. But it's probably, I don't know, 15 years old. It's still a good bike. It's better than most of them, I find. And 75 bucks, and it's a mountain bike. It's not a cruiser, and the guy's going to put a motor on it. I mean, whatever, you know, there's you know, okay, whatever. He paid me hundred dollars for it. I'll take it. So I just thought that was interesting. He's getting a mountain bike. He's going to put a motor on it. I don't even think an electric motor. I think a gas motor is what he's talking about. So I don't know. Apparently there's something going on with people buying bikes and put motors on them around here. And I'm the guy that's selling it to him. Okay. I did have three eBay sales. They were not great, but I'll show you anyway. Okay. So first thing that sold is Nintendo controllers. These were part of that $10 original Nintendo um, box, I'll call it, that I got at uh, Goodwill one Sunday night a while back. It had controllers in there, some zappers, and a bunch of games. It was only 10 bucks. And uh, all in, I should make way more than that, like probably $100 worth when it's all, when they, uh, all said and done. Now, what's weird about these controllers is the backs are yellowed and the fronts are not. And I thought that was a little weird. But uh, anyway, they didn't sell for a lot, but they sold decently. They sold for $10 plus $6.70 shipping, so that is $16.70 total. And they did take a while, too. So, Okay, the next item that sold is this right here. Another one of these Haynes manuals. Um, kind of like those model kits. It doesn't. It's new, but it doesn't have the plastic wrap, so it kind of devalues a little bit. 
But uh, anyway, I got this at the auto parts store. I think it was Advanced Auto. I explained a while back. I bought a whole bunch, like 14 of them or 16 of them or something like that. I got a really good deal, as cheap as they could possibly sell them to me. They were in the clearance rack. I got them for $258 each plus tax. They ended up being, I think, $276 each. And most of them went for about like this one did. I've made my money back, so now this is all pure profit. It sold for $14.95 plus free shipping. Um, Every one I have sent out has been like about $3 to send out. Plus I'll have some fees, so I'll probably make mm, $9 pure profit, something like that. So not amazing, but I have a bunch of them. So I spent, you know, $38 or $39, and I will sell in total probably $150, $160 total. So that's a really good flip. Okay, next one is pretty cool. It's the best eBay sale of the weekend. Not great, but still not too bad. Uh, okay, it's wrapped up. You're not going to be able to see it. I have to show a picture. This is a Nintendo GameCube and the cord to plug it into the wall. And that's it. Uh, I think there might have been a game inside too, if I remember. I got it right down the road at a garage sale for $1. It's also the sale where I bought the um, slide rule and the adi adiator or whatever it was. I showed a video or two ago. I got it for a dollar. It just sold for, what was it, 45 bucks. This sold for... $38 plus free shipping. I had no way to test it. It plugged in. It turned on. That's about all I know. So I just explained I sold it for, you know, parts repair. And I uh, just said, you know, that's all I got. I wasn't able to test it. No controllers, none of that kind of stuff. So I'm just selling it as is. And it sold for $38 bucks plus free shipping. So that was the sales of the week. My local sales were pretty good. eBay sales, uh, not so good. So man, it's kind of a really slow week, but whatever. It's just how it goes sometimes. But uh, anyway, if you like these uh, videos I'm making, showing you different things I'm buying and flipping, you like that, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment of what you think. And then if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. And then click the little bell icon to keep up with more of these videos. So anyway, thanks a lot.